main question I always get is how does one access this youth fund? What 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 do, what requirements do they have? Do they have to be in a group? Can it be an individual? How much can they get? What is the maximum? What is the minimum? Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that the youth are telling me is that the bureaucracy there is intense. If I just want to walk in there and get some funding, I would have to go through so many issues of red tape. Is that true? Let me put it this way. It's easier to get youth fund money than it is to get a bank, bank loan, right? Okay. Um, the processes, of course, are different because ours is more developmental. But, you know, banks are commercial. Nevertheless, we need to benchmark our services to banking standards because that's really what we are. We provide more than just financial services because we do, you know, enterprise support, we do market linkages, we do trainings, and all those other beautiful things we do on the side. But on the financing side, uh, I must admit that, you know, we're not very properly structured to provide this service. Um, but it is really basic. We finance both um, uh, startups and established enterprises. So what does one need to do? If you're, a start, a youth if, today. if you're a startup, you need to be in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a group, right? Of how many? Of, well, the usual group. So, you know, our groups uh, would usually be an average of 15 persons. Okay. Right. Minimum is two? M groups. Yes. There's requirements for formation of groups, right? Registered by the Registrar of Societies. Mm -hmm. And I think the minimum is 10, mm -hmm. right? But the average groups we've found are about 15. Okay. groups that are properly functioning. Um, so those are the ones we work with. Okay. Right? Um, obviously, the benefits of group lending are enormous. You know, accountability, they hold each other accountable. So we are guaranteed that we'll get our money back. But we also finance indi individuals, mm -hmm. right? If you have a registered uh, uh, company, you know, and you want to access uh, working capital, then we finance up to uh, a maximum of 2 million shillings. Okay. Interest rate. Interest free. Interest free. But what does this single individual have to produce? What do, what do they have to show you to know that they have a company? Because just having a company, in fact, this is tied to an editorial on page 14 of the Daily Nation, whereby the title is Make Youth Fund <laughs> very Effective. Mis very misinformed editorial, I must admit. Yeah, I, will let you, I will let you respond <laughs> to this, but they say that the, the issue here is really throwing money at the problem and yes. not giving a way forward. And therefore, the payment, the payment defaulting rates are enormous. So Agreed. I mean, the, 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 the challenge we have today is that we are looked at as the Youth Enterprise Fund. Mm -hmm. Fund is what stands out. The development part is The development there. part is completely forgotten. And the way the fund had been structured before has also been to focus more on financing. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've been trying to push, and you know, now I think it's a conversation we are having, um, and we are putting, you know, a lot of changes, is that we need to focus on the enterprise development because that's really what we are. Other than financing, we have five other mandates. Mm -hmm. We have five other mandates. We have the, you know, uh, we have to find market linkages for these young people. Mm -hmm. We have to do business support services. We have to provide commercial infrastructure. And we, we have to do sensitization. And all these are the things that we do on the side. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that I think we need to begin to focus on. However, you have a point that to date we've been throwing money at the problem okay and uh, we absolutely need to you know shift that focus the repayment rate is not as bad as are usually reported mm -hmm. our, our repayment rate today is at about 87 percent okay and that is if you remove if you don't remove the bad investments we made in agribusiness loans uh, we made some very bad investments in the past uh, on hatcheries and um, the greenhouses, uh, greenhouses okay. which we are completely re-engineering. If you remove those two products, the repayment rate shoots up to 95%, okay. which is almost equal to banking sector. Yeah, and you see, the, th the thing is, you've mentioned that an individual can be financed up to 2 million shillings, yeah. but the question is, what do they have to do to get the money? Because that is the part, that is the gap that the youth don't know. They Absolutely. don't know how to follow yeah. that procedure. What do they need? How do they go about it? Okay. Do they just walk into your office? Do they need connections? They don't, absolutely don't need connections. Mm -hmm. We have uh, 14 regional offices, okay. uh, and we have 250 offices in one in every constituency. Uh, our officers have the mandate, the, the, the challenge here and the gap, I think, where you know young people struggled with is that our officers in the constituencies don't have an office they are roving officers okay. uh, strategically placed however every constituency has a youth officer 
and the youth officer at the constituency level has an office. And we have information seated at that youth officer's uh, office from the Ministry of, uh, of Youth. Okay. All right. We today have our services available at uh, the regional level, at all the 14 regional, and there we have offices. So what do I need to have once I've figured out where the regional officers are? What do I need to have in order to get this financing? Let's, let's say you first need to have an idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have an idea, uh -huh. and then you need to walk to our office. Mm -hmm. Assume you know where our offices are, and you can go to our website, www.youthfund.go.ke, uh, and you can find all our office locations in there. And once you get there, you will be given a form. You'll be assisted by an officer to fill your form and meet all the requirements in that form. Every product has different requirements. So depending on which product you're going in for, you'll be given the requirements, you'll be walked through it. Our mandate does not require us to throw people out because you didn't meet the requirements. We are different from a bank where you, you, know, you walk into a bank and you're told, no, you don't have you the don't requirements, have collateral, that's it. Mm -hmm. Our job is then to ensure that you meet the requirements. Okay. So we assist you to meet your requirements. This editorial you're talking about says that the lack of training is, is preceded the disbursement, and that's the reason why the defaulting rate is quite high. Is that true? Uh, some Indeed. not. Okay. Some not. We actually have a training for all our beneficiaries, pre-disbursement. Now, the quality of the training is what we could then could bring into question. Or the curriculum that we use for training could be brought into question. We are already reviewing the curriculum. Again, we should be launching a curriculum pretty soon. But how do you know that these plans that any a youth gives you are watertight? Because that's part of the thing. The, the editorial that you just rubbished has also mentioned <laughs> that as well. That some beneficiaries have failed to repay their loans because they do not have any meaningful plans or even projects to begin with. So how do you know that this particular project is watertight? It is the officer's responsibility, the lending officer's responsibility to vet the idea and vet the, uh, the youth who is requesting for this loan, yeah. right? Based on the, you, uh, the officer's recommendation, a loan will be approved. Now, there could be a failure in that system. And one of the things we're doing, at this will shock you, is that we do not have an automated system to do a credit scoring. All right? Everything so is done is manually. Manual. So everything is done manually. So we, re we depend on Trevor in some remote constituency, in some remote county, okay. to tell us okay. that Ronnie is qualified for this facility. Hold that right? thought one second. We have callers online. Abdul, good afternoon. afternoon. Abdul, go ahead with your comment or question. Yeah, I have a question uh, to the to Mr. Osumba. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, I'm a youth, uh -huh. and I registered, you know, a company with the group. Mm -hmm. But when I attended I, I for a tender in Nairobi yes. County, uh -huh. when I walked into the offices, I was told that Nairobi County, we are not funding, and I was with the Nini LPO. You had an LPO? Yeah, I had an LPO. Okay. Uh, they told me Nairobi County, we are not funding you. Okay. Uh, I asked why, that at least, you know, we have some problems with the Nairobi County, but you could come with a collateral. So I just don't understand how will the youth fund be, you know, uh, so uh, useful to us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Abdul. We have another caller online. Gitonga, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, go ahead with your comment or question, Gitonga. Okay, I have a question. Yes. So I applied for youth fund mm -hmm. uh, in the year 2016. 2010? No, 2016. Okay, 2016, yes. Yeah, so I applied for, uh, I, I had a collateral which was the, the title deed. Okay. The title deed was, uh, was brought about 3.5 million. Okay. And the amount I had applied for was 700,000. Okay. So I had all the requirements which were, which were, which were, which were set down by the vocal loan that. Okay. But unfortunately, I tried to follow this up for six months and nothing, completely nothing worked out. When oh. I went to the constituency office, yeah. They did just told me that it's being followed up, it's being followed up, it's being followed up. And at the end of it all, I got tired 
Okay. And I went to the I went I went to get funding from the bank. All right. So I I was really frustrated and this is something which has frustrated youth for, for many, many years. Youth fund has since youth fund was accepted. Okay. So I'm I'm asking Mr. Osumba, how serious are they when they see that they are funding youth businesses? Because right now, in fact right now, I have two bank loans while well, I am a youth. I am paying, I was paying interest at 24% before it was lowered. So I was supposed to pay that, in, if it were not lowered, I was supposed to pay that expensive loan. All right, well, thanks, Gitonga. Well, they have all that money sitting in the bank, and it's not helping us. All right, thanks. Thanks, Gitonga. That's Gitonga, and uh, you, have, uh, you have to respond to both of them, Abdul and Gitonga. Let's start with Abdul. He <laughs> said that he was told that Nairobi is not going to get the funding, and you already had an LPO, and he was also asked for collateral. And he was wondering, how does a youth have collateral? I suspect what he's talking about is uh, LPO financing, right? Mm -hmm. yes. for, for Nairobi County government. Yes. Now, we have had uh, you know, a lot of challenges with county governments uh, in terms of uh, repaying. And I really feel for Abdul because, unfortunately, there are a lot of young people who are investing uh, in setting up their enterprises, taking uh, facilities, whether it is from us or from uh, banks, uh, getting businesses from counties and not getting paid. Okay. Um, and I've seen a lot of cases where young people's businesses have gone bust. So know. then is this a breakdown of the system? Because the Youth Enterprise Development Fund was meant to help the people who get the 30% youth Absolutely. procurement. I completely agree with you. And from where I'm seated, we are actually completely frustrated by counties that are not honoring their part. You know, whether they have signed letters of undertaking and then not uh, 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 enforcing their letters of undertaking, or whether they just outrightly, you know, uh, refuse to make payments. And there are a lot of enterprises suffering because of that. Um, it's something we've taken up with the Council of Governors. Next week we have the, the annual conference. Uh, annual uh, devolution conference mm. it's one of the things that we have insisted must be on discussion on the table okay. because we must build a framework that works for young people that said that said there are our counties you know few yeah. <laughs> there are our counties that are actually excellent in execution of this partnership all right and the other issue of collateral because not everyone can afford, can have a title deed like a gitonga or a, a collateral or a logbook for a vehicle or something if Ag I simply just have an idea and what Agreed. I need is funding. Agreed. We are doing our product re-engineering. One of the things we've said is we must remove this issue of collateral and all our facilities must be completely zero interest. Okay. So it is something we are already addressing. What is the minimum you're giving to, a, to an individual and groups? 50,000. 50,000. And we are doing the a maximum, maximum of up to 20 million for LPO financing. For LPO financing. But you just mentioned that the counties it. that are not paying. Yes, they absolutely. But, but there are other government agencies that are giving uh, uh, ag for projects. Okay. Okay. So we still have a lot of people who are coming in. I know young people from, you know, like the county of Meru, very good yeah. in making their payments. All right. And so we are still And financing. what about Gitonga? Gitonga applied in 2016 at 3.5 million it was just taken round and round. He never got the money. And he's frustrated. He's saying that how is that money supposed to help if it just sits in the bank? Absolutely. I mean, I completely, again, feel Gitonga's frustration. Uh, I share in that frustration. In the no, sense what are that you doing about it? The You're the boss. <laughs> I know. In the sense that our turnaround period has been up to when I joined, yeah. up to six months. Mm -hmm. In the last eight months, we have brought it down to between four and six weeks. Okay. We've cut it down by more than... 75 percent okay all right the target is to bring it to absolutely 48 hours all right one of the ways we are going to achieve this is by deploying the erp mm -hmm. enterprise resource planning which will be a system that will automate the entire process in fact it will even make access to youth fund much easier because we are deploying a mobile app as well okay so that you can make your application from your home yeah. from the village Right, we receive the application, we process it, and everything is done, you know, uh, speedily. Yeah. So we are addressing a lot of those gaps. I know the frustrations are still there. We, there are a lot of the things we are working on are still under the grid, right? So the impact is not yet being felt. Yeah. Uh, but we hope that very soon, you know, people will begin to feel this. Impact. As we wind up, do you have a feedback mechanism whereby if I walk into your offices and I'm not getting the service that I need, who can I complain to? How can I be helped? Do you have a feedback mechanism system? So, <laughs> again, like I said, 
yeah. our systems are not automated. Mm -hmm. So feedback, again, is extremely manual. So again, I'm very dependent yeah. on yeah. Trevor in uh, some constituency there yeah. to ensure that I receive that feedback. And if the officer people. doesn't relay my well, feedback, the to feedback, you, then the feedback is not relayed, then it doesn't get to me. However, we've yeah. now opened channels, okay. particularly on social media, right. where young people can get uh, their feedback through. Okay. So, you know, we have, um, uh, uh, we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook, okay. uh, we are on Instagram, and I have gotten some of the best advice right. from young people on these platforms. So, tweet us. Okay. Uh, we'll continue this conversation. We have to leave mm -hmm. it there for now. Ronald Osuba, chairman of the Youth Enterprise Development Fund. Of course, we'll have him back later on to f find out how much they've gone forward with implementing the system they want to implement to ensure that you as a youth can get the funding you need when you have an idea.